Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories, starting with the first book, Critical Failures. With me today is Sam West, and we are going to be talking about the spell Anti-Magic Field. It's kind of a kind of a big one. It's a high level one. It is an eight level yeah. monster of a spell. Yeah, uh, so you just you create a big sphere of no magic, and you can uh, no magic in or out. Uh, nothing works. Uh, yeah, you get a big bubble of everyone stops playing Dungeons and Dragons. Kind of, <laughs> it's neat. Uh, it's this uh, anti magic field is hard. Anti magic field is hard because I think often people go into thinking about its utility like they think about dispel magic. Dispel magic is very good. It's like routinely one of the spells that you fall back on as a, this is a solution to weird problems the DM throws in front of us. Um, this is a way to break enchantments, it's a way to break curses, all that fun stuff. Anti magic field is like its big brother, but it has the equal backlash where now all of your magic items, all of your spells, all of your party spells, all the people around you no longer function either. Short of artifacts, which, I mean, we're in that tier where you might be walking around with a couple artifacts. This does turn off all of your other options. While you There's are meaning, people around you, it's a, what is it, 10 foot radius feet. or something? Yeah, so if, if people want to use magic, they can you know, yes. step away from you. Yes. You notably still can't, which is important because right. you are a full caster with eighth level spells, which means while this thing's up, your seventh level and lower spell slots no longer exist. Pretend they're not there because as long as this is here, you can't use them. Um, and that's a really dramatic downside. That is a, a yeah. you don't have access to counter spell. You don't have access to dispel magic. You don't have access to any of your protection spells like shield. You don't have access to any of the normal things that you're probably accustomed to falling back on. In exchange though, you do kind of get the magical solution to all magic problems. This is the spell that just spontaneously says, if it is made of magic and not ninth level or higher, I can probably mitigate it. Um, the problem that I have with it is most of the time there are other things that deal with those problems better, but just they don't deal with all of the problems. That's where I yeah, think- This is a big catch-all. Yes, this is the spell where you go, okay, I really don't want to have to think about the encounters we're going up against. I really don't want to think about the environment we're going up in this. I'm just taking an anti-magic field and saying, if we run into magic, this will deal with it. That's kind of what the spell's purpose to me is, because that's what it is best at doing. Um, the cost of not being able to cast spells yourself is a very large one, um, one that I can't really understate, but I also don't want to understate that, like, if it is a magical problem, yeah, this is an answer to it. If short of deities and artifacts, which I mean, that's a way you're if you're DMing for it, you could be like, nah, I do have a solution to this. God gave him this privilege, uh, and he's going to use that specific magical stagger to stab you. Um, then yeah, that that's a way you can get around it as a DM. But as like from a player's perspective, going into it, this can just be your your cop out for whatever you need. If you find yourself on things like an army of undead. They're no longer, they're just regular dead now. If they come within 10 feet of you, they're they're just deceased. They're just bones. That's fine. Bones are fine. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, undead is, yeah, I guess undead are created by a spell. I didn't, I didn't even think about that. Yes. And even created undead, summoned. Like, what a, what a, like a vampire? Uh, the, if the vampire was created by a spell, yes. Oh. But that, I don't think that frequently happens. No, no, I don't think so. This spell is also going to give you a lot of situations like this where you're like, oh, does that, is this an answer to that problem? Does the, is, was this summoned by that? And you kind of go through like this hierarchy of figuring out how things yeah. got the material plane, which is always funky. Um, you find this problem too with uh, banishment kinds of magic where you're like, okay, wait, so it's undead. So it could get banished here, but is it native to the material? Did a lich spawn this? I don't know. What's the history of this particular white? And you get into these weird little like, strange questions the DM never even began to thought of whatever like oh looking for a quick encounter find this oh that's a white that looks cool and just stick it in there and uh, it just, you you don't really I don't know it it adds, what it about, asks uh, a lot of odd questions all right you, you you run through a horde of zombies and they all drop when you when you leave them do they are they zombies again yep they pop right, right. back up <laughs> that's, also, that's, that's fun yeah it's actually really cool um this is one of the few spells that you can just Summoned creatures don't go anywhere. They just no longer exist, which is weird. Um, and you can do some neat things where if like there are ways you can forcibly summon people. So you can conceivably forcibly summon a buddy next to you 
cast this, they cease to exist, and then just hold them there for however long you need to. If you need them to pop out randomly, like let's say you have a big bad encounter and they can detect cross planes and conjure and pull people from all walks of life, you use a ninth level spell, summon your buddy, hide them in an anti-magic field, they cease to exist, and then you can just drop it and they pop back into existence and start killing things. It's niche, it's dumb, but it's things you can do with this spell that you can't really- I kind of like that zombie horde thing. That's- uh... Oh yeah. I may use that in a future book. It's pretty but, cool. Uh, oh, it, before I forget, yeah, you were uh, you mentioned before about the uh, the disadvantage of not being able to cast magic. Now that is only if I'm well. I mean, probably mostly in a combat situation. Whereas uh, anti magic field, I imagine would be be useful many times outside of combat. So it is, I would normally say yes. It is at the stage in the game where a lot of your, you, you're probably falling back on a lot of out, of out of combat utility spells. So fly, for example. If you don't have an organic fly speed, you can't fly anymore if you use anti-magic field. You just plummet to the ground um, and you can die from fall damage. That's a thing that can occur well, to you. you. Well, if you cast this while you're flying, then shame on you. Sure, agreed, agreed. Right. But, I, but the point to that, right, is that yes, this is a spell you would normally want to use out of combat, but a lot of the things that you would sort of rely on out of combat, water breathing, water walking, fly, yeah. uh, pass without trace, invisibility, none of that works. You just have to accept that all the out of combat spells too also don't function when you have a uh, anti-magic field up. So like, if you're just going through a dungeon, you do have to weigh the question of, would I rather be cast like greater invisibility or something on myself? That mm. makes me permanently invisible. Um, alternatively, I could just have a giant area of no magic allowed and maybe just hope for the best. If there are mundane traps, you're still screwed, right? It doesn't solve mundane traps, it just solves mm. magical ones. And if you're going into high magic environments, oftentimes you're going to want high magic of your own to sort of interact with it. A lot yeah. of the upper tier stuff I've run um, tends to be in situations where I know my party has some access to like flight speeds, has some access to teleportation, can navigate three dimensionally in weird ways. So like one of the big encounters that I like to point to was a, uh, a, a Jin's palace that was, or sorry, a cloud giant's palace that was crumbling and falling from the sky, right? And the final encounter was them falling through uh, falling through the sky, going from giant rock to giant rock to try and get to the throne that was like this giant mystical astral portal. That's the kind of nonsense that you can do in fifth edition that, or in Dungeons and Dragons, generally speaking, that lends yeah. itself to having a variety of out of combat tools at your disposal. And anti magic field, it doesn't really, it doesn't let you use any of your tools. It says their tools don't work either, but neither do mine. And that's tricky. This is also a very useful spell. Like if you know you're against a lich, if you can get on top of the lich, the lich then just becomes a pile of bones. That's neat. Um, you can you can do some neat things where you're against an ancient kind of magical being inherently. Turning off their spellcasting probably guts them. They can't legendary resistance out of anti-magic field. If you can get on top of them with a barbarian, the barbarian can grab them and they're just a weakling that you know just happens to have nine level spell slots. Anti-magic field kills them, basically. Um, that's really powerful. At the same time, it also kind of kills you for the duration. And there's always these weird back and forths that I come to find the spell creates that are odd, but interesting. And I like spells that are odd, but interesting. All right. Uh, man, what a, I feel like there's more we could discuss with this. This is such a... Sure. So, I mean, I, I don't know anything specifically. <laughs> just, well, uh, so as a DM tool, for example, using anti-magic field from the DM perspective as opposed to players is an easy okay, sort of good one. thing to approach. Um, as a dungeon master, if you are facing specific problems, like you oopsie doodle gave them a weapon that's way too powerful, anti-magic fields can feel cheap if you're, they're used frequently. But when used infrequently in important locations can be vitally important to rebalancing some of the things in the game that you'd like to. If you're finding that the some players are a little bit outshining others and that's attached to magic, that tends to be what happens in the upper tiers anyway, having areas of anti-magic fields can actually give a lot of encounters a really cool and interesting dynamic where you physically, like the casters physically have to rely on their non-caster friends to solve mundane problems again. If you have a giant anti-magic field that's encompassing a, a base, that it could simply be a means of the stronghold needing regular stealth to infiltrate again. You can't rely on your passive out traits. You can't rely on your invisibilities. You have to rely on stealth, well-placed distractions, classic 
mundane adventuring tactics of making straw men and pushing them out on uh, fake carts as a distraction or, you know, lighting a fire that's a mundane fire that'll spread and get other people's attention or, you know, getting behind a guard that's half asleep because he's tired and stabbing them in the neck and, you know, getting in that way. You can create those environments again that magic normally just solves using anti-magic fields. You don't really want to do that all the time. You probably don't want to have the whole environment be anti-magic field because it can really feel like garbage to just be waiting around for 45 minutes to an hour before you're allowed to use your things again. Um, mm -hmm. But having targeted areas to allow other players moments to shine is where I think anti-magic field is actually at its best. Um, it also does all the things that it does for the players for DMs though as well. So like you can still have the, well, I just need to get my big bad with anti-magic field and a great axe on top of the wizard and the wizard's going to cut to very small pieces because they can't do anything whenever they're uh, inside the anti-magic field. Those mean they can keep them there, of course. If they can't keep them there, they're going to have problems. That's another thing about it, though. It's a, it's a concentration spell, correct? Yeah, that's true. So a, you know, a wizard using this is making himself a, a, a kind of an extra vulnerable target because uh, I, I would think most of the things that would boost his armor class yes. would be magical. RIP mage armor, RIP shield. Those are gone. You're now just a, a whatever you 10 plus your dex mod is. That's how hard you are to yeah. hit. Uh, so yeah, that is, again, very real downside. It helps that in the upper tiers often you're going to see a little bit less non-magical attacks. You're going to see a little bit less like longbows and stuff. If you're fighting up using this in combat, you're going to see you'll see some and in situations where you're fighting a large horde, it's going to be difficult because like, oh, well, there's an archer, undead archer battalion. If a single one of them hits me, there's a chance this just goes away. That's really bad. Um, but again, you don't necessarily cast this whenever you're marching against a giant, but like a specific situation. You cast this whenever you're in a spot where you need to nullify magic and want the effect to persist for a little while, which makes it complex. And there aren't always, every use case is going to vary in odd ways that are difficult to express. Like normally it's easy to say, this spell's obviously good here. Any magic spell isn't obviously good anywhere, but it's also not obviously bad anywhere necessarily just if there's magic it can be good and it cannot be good and that makes it wacky and weird and tricky it, it feels like a like a neat chess game kind of spell yes, absolutely where your fighter and rogues are positioning and your rangers mm -hmm. and druids and you're the wizard and like all right i've got this and i need to get the thing to prevent the thing from teleporting after we kill right. all the goons and you go through a whole bunch of different hoops and planning and trying to line up where you want this to be and yeah all that kind of nonsense it's definitely kind of the spells feel for sure what, uh, what's the Sam score for this one? I actually put the, I think I overrate this, but I will say that I think this is a four out of five. I think this is a spell that in the hands of a DM in particular, just having a, having a way to say, okay, enough. We're going to, we're going to quietly create some space for other people to have fun to the people that are hyper magical is very good and very useful. The spell has really clear moments of it being very powerful. I might say very clear moments. There will be times where you'll be like, oh, only anti-magic field saves us here. And that will do it. Um, at the same time, you don't need this on every character sheet. Most games won't probably need this, but you can get a lot of mileage out of it if you use it cleverly. And if you can, it can kind of reframe how your DM and how players have to think about the game. Yeah, I like it both for the um, you know, it's advantages and disadvantages. I think yeah, that same. makes you know, using it a lot of fun. Agreed. All right. Well, that was Anti-Magic Field. Thank you to Sam for uh, being on here and thank you listeners and watchers for listening and watching. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.